right into this. So let's talk about still a trending topic. A uh, guy we talked about last week, Oliver Anthony. I want to talk about him again because he went on Rogan. And, you know, I I found the – I did not watch the whole appearance. I didn't watch the – or I did not listen to the whole podcast. But I found it interesting because, you know, much has come out about this guy. No one knows what's real, what's fake. Like I saw a thing about – and he even joked about it on the show. Like he's going to play the Super Bowl, but he's going to do it for free because he would never take money to – do the national anthem at the Super Bowl or whatever the whatever. And he laughed about it and it is funny. Laughable at that. I found the appearance interesting because I feel like he is he's he's having trouble being criticized about being bought in on who he is. And what you hear on this episode is that he kind of created Oliver Anthony as somewhat of like a character, if you will. Which again I find interesting, but you know, again, it's not just about the name. Like, you know, how many musicians have fake names that don't use their real names? And what I find interesting about it is that he created this character, and when you hear him speak, he doesn't have an accent like he sings with, which is bizarre. Not many people choose to speak, and he sounds like an articulate guy when he speaks. So not many people choose to speak that way and then use, let me go ahead and use this country accent and my as my singing voice or my singing accent. So I found all of that very interesting. I think he's having a hard time coping with the idea that people are criticizing that he's bought in on himself. But he does talk about, you know, the influence and why he's sort of doing what he's doing. And I, I, I said, the song's not for me. I don't like the song. I don't like his voice. And I did predict, last week that the voice is forced i don't think it's genuine i don't think it's him necessarily and you find out like well yeah he's he's forcing it if you will i don't think that's really his singing voice necessarily but he also talks about how he's an untrained singer he's still trying to figure it out he doesn't want to get lessons he doesn't want to be a trained singer it's all coming from the heart and good for him i agree and when i say the song's not for me it doesn't mean i think it's a bad song i understand why people like the song I understand why people like him. I understand why people like the voice. I think the song went viral because it's politically leaning and the subject matter is politically leaning. And right now, that's a quick way to shoot to number one. Let either the liberals or conservatives latch on to whatever your song is about and it will take off. And he talks about like, well, the song's about all of those people, the leaders. It seems like he doesn't like government, which is cool. Good, good for you. I'm with you. So... But he does have a few humble moments on this podcast. Again, I haven't listened to the whole thing, but he, you know, again, I think he's a genuinely into his music, but I think he's also genuinely confused as to why people are questioning his intent with the music, if you will. I guess that's when I first kind of adapted the name for the music. I didn't really get serious with anything until probably... Two weeks ago? Yeah, <laughs> until a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Probably until I think I uploaded the first original... Uh -huh. Like, like when I was, when I decided I was in it to win it and I really wanted to make this thing happen, um, it was probably about it. Yeah. Probably May of last year when I uploaded ain't got a dollar or it might've been rich man's goal was the first one I uploaded on YouTube. But that's when I decided like, all right, I'm, I'm doing this thing. Anxiety is, a, is definitely something that's underestimated. You know, I used to laugh about or not laugh about, but I used to just not really understand when people talked about mental health and anxiety because everyone gets stressed out over stuff. And so you think of anxiety as being just like this normal phenomenon everyone deals with, but your, your mind can really put you in a dark place to where that thing is just like, it just holds on to you like a, yeah. you know, and it, it yeah. just um, makes it very difficult for you to do anything. That's you know? especially true for people that are pursuing a non-traditional life. Okay. Well, there you have it. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to disrespect the guy's approach to dealing with his mental health and using music as a way of doing that. Or if he thinks that his mental health was a reason that it took him so long to sort of blow up. I get it. However... If anything is true, if if it's true that he turned down million dollar deals and which all has been documented, and I don't know if he said it on the show, whether any of that stuff is fake. Again, it's on the internet, so who the fuck knows? But if any of that is true, he is very important to other independent artists who are trying to do it full time and have a career in music, because he is an example of what can happen. No. Are we dealing with a diamond in the rough type situation? Maybe. Are we dealing in, in with a sort of, you know, lightning strikes 
perhaps won't strike twice type situation? Maybe. It's hard to say. What I do know is that in today's day and age, if you have a song that can get people talking based on the subject matter, meaning it strikes a specific group and then it has another group who are going to dislike that that specific group like it, it's going to take off. Doesn't necessarily always have to be political, but I think in this day and age, typically it is. Now, people have gone viral without being political. I understand that more and more so in 2023, it takes being political to go viral. So, but good for him. I, I, I wish him all the best, man. Like, I, I think, I mean, who knows? Like, let's just listen to his newest song. I have not listened. So we, we listened to that song last week on the show and I had not heard it. I saw the thumbnails. I saw the headlines. I saw, I didn't click on it. I did not listen to it. I listened to it live on our show. Again, not for me. Don't dig it, but don't get it twisted. I understand why people like it. And just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's a bad song. It's a good song for what it is. It's got 51 million views on YouTube. My God. So he released a song nine days ago called I Want to Go Home. It has almost 7 million views now. So let's check this out. Let's just see what it's about. We all know the hit. Let's go to the non-hit. Although I would call 6 million views on YouTube pretty successful. Who knows? One for my whole dogs and the good Lord. God, that voice just... After hearing him speak, I hate the voice even more. God. They'd have me strung up in the psych ward Cause every day living in this new world Is one too many days to me Son, we're on the brink of the next world war and i don't think nobody's praying no more and i ain't i mean he talks about on the show like he's not a trained singer and he doesn't think he's necessarily singing the right way or he's whatever but like dude that's good he's good again not for me but he's good and i get why people like it it feels real to them Feels very sort of, he's our guy. He's an everyday guy type dude. But just so happens to have this voice that I don't have. Playing, I know it for sure. I'm just down on my knees. Begging the Lord and take me home. I want to go home. I don't know which road to go. Man. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. That's... Not for me. Uh, yeah, his voice really bugs me. Now that I've heard him talk, it's that voice is just weird to me. But again, I know why people like it. I'm never going to like something like that. I just want to be very clear. I don't like country music. I grew up. <laughs> I I grew up in a different place. I grew up. In, I did not grow up around country music. You know, I just didn't. It was not a thing that was a part of my life ever, ever. Not at any point in my life was I around country music. Did I listen to country music? Did someone try to get me to listen to country music? It was not my thing. So it's never going to be my thing. Sorry. So let's we can we can move off this. So good for him. I I, I wish the guy the best, man. Uh, I really hope he continues to do well and continues to be independent, to most importantly, and can hopefully pave the way for one to two to five to ten, huh? however many artists can get inspired by him and do their own thing and avoid fucked up music industry that we live in. I'm saying we because I'm in the music industry, kind of. So let's go to a fan question. This one came on Twitter and it came from Peyton Forster, raised on the radio, which band deserves radio play that does not get it? Well, that's a loaded question. You know, I think we did a we did a series of posts about this a couple weeks ago, months ago, whatever it was now, uh, just asking people, just kind of put the question out there, like a poll question, like who who should be on the radio? Who, who do you listen to that should be on the radio that is not? Now, look, do artists still value, ra uh, you know, radio play? I don't know. I love, I don't listen to the radio as much as I used to, but I still love the idea that bands can get on the radio and gain new fans. And 
do things that they could not do because of that radio play. I st- I'm fortunate enough to live in a city where our rock radio station and our hip hop radio station do really well. And if you're an artist who gets on one of those stations, you do well in this city. So if you're not from the city and you get on one of those stations and you come here and you play a show, you're likely going to be supported by the station and it's likely going to bring more people to your shows. So I still value it. But to so to answer the question, you know, we ask people and there are a lot of answers thrown around. I'm going to give I have tons of answers. I could give you bands from St. Louis that should be on the radio, but I'll give you the one that I said. You know, the one that I said when we did this series of questions or this poll question, and I'm going to go with it now. It's been one of my favorite bands. They have been one of my favorite bands for four or five years now, probably longer than that, six years. And I do, I just cannot stress enough. I don't know how any of the stuff they've put out hasn't caught on, on mainstream terrestrial radio, whatever the case may be. The band is Hands Like Houses. One of my favorite bands. To me, they can really do no wrong. And, you know, they've had music that came out six, seven years ago, eight years ago that I was like, how is this not getting picked up by radio? But then they surprised me three, four years ago when I was really sort of like, I gave up on the idea that like they care about it, but they brought this album out and I go, oh man something tells me that they think they should be on radio. Now, I don't know this. I've never heard them say this. I've never, I've never, you know, I have no idea, but they brought out some music and they brought out this record. Let me just play you this. I don't know how songs like this don't get played on rock active radio as we know it today. And maybe it got played on serious rock radio. I'm sure it did. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about terrestrial radio your your local radio stations that are corporate. This song's called Monster. Dude, a, a perfect mix of alternative meets. I don't even know. I, I've never really known what to call this band. Like they have riffing that you commonly hear in metalcore and gent, if some people call it that. I know they're not gent, but they have so many mixtures of things going on. Pop meets punk meets alternative indie rock. There's just so many. Like they're hard to like label, and maybe that's why they don't get played on radio. But I think this is a perfect representation of rock and roll, this song. Great band, great voice, great songwriting. Like, what? So that's Hands Like Houses. I mean, we could play so many of these songs. But from this same record, you know, again, that song was called Monster. But another song I heard when it came out, I go, holy shit, this is Hands Like Houses. They are totally transitioning. We'll play some old stuff, too. We'll get into the old stuff, too. So they had another song called Head Rush. Just preposterous that it was never on radio.
so hearing his voice and hearing this 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 rhythmic sort of verse i was blown away because if and i'm going to go back and i'll show you old hands like houses which again i think should have been on the radio it's a vastly different sound for for what they what they're doing what they were doing what they used to be doing and then you know what their direction they're headed in now which who knows but like what decade is it when i when i hear this i go what decade is it but also awesome i don't want to know what decade it is i just want to feel it Great riffs, great hook. So that's a little bit more current, but this is what they used to sound like. And this is just when I sort of, when I fell in love with. But again, could have been on the radio. In my opinion. This song rips. A little heavier, a little more riffy, right? Better or for worse, a vision of the future's getting blurred between the black and white. Naming every shade of gray has left us colorblind. We are all the nightmare, not the room. We are the sickness and the symptom. So distracted by that guy's perfect hair. <laughs> The production is just, sonically speaking, it's so good. Hell yeah. Very cool band. Look, if Bad Omens can go to number one on rock radio, so can this band. That's all I'm going to say. Bad Omens just went, went to number one, a band I really like. So I think a band like this could also do that. So Peyton, that's my number one. That's my number one band that should be on the radio that is not on the radio. Don't know why they're not on the radio. I don't know if it's a business thing. It's an industry thing. I don't know if it's them. Who, who knows? The other band I'll tell you, it's probably going to come to no surprise to anyone that listens to the show. I talk about them a lot. And no, it's not Beartooth. Beartooth should be on the radio, but I, I don't think I need to give Beartooth any more credit than they already have. Beartooth knows. They know. It's only a matter of time. It's a band called Bill Murray. Recently, just saw this band live. So good. Definitely a band that should be on the radio. Very poppy, very different. And it's probably like the, the, the you know, it's a very, it's, <laughs> it's an eccentric sort of tastemaker sound, if you will. And they certainly don't, you can tell that they're not trying to please anyone other than themselves and their fans. Def definitely not industry darlings, but their music is so poppy. A song called Corn Fed Yetis. It is so good. So catchy. And I like to burn, I can feel new wavy guitar, new wavy. Oh, so good.
voices in the silence. No. But I get afraid that if I open up my eyelids, that I won't feel nothing at all. Don't need to catch me if I fall. And I don't ever want to feel like this. No. There's a so as I'm in my chest. As I'm listening to it, I love it, but it might not be mature enough for radio. I hate saying that, but I know what <laughs> radio folks, I know how they think. And I don't want to sound so violent, no, but maybe I should be alone instead. Hold my head to the sink, I've never felt so low, and I Cool band. I, uh, you know, again, I could go on and on. I have so many of these that I could say. So anyway, Peyton, thank you for your question. Those are two. You know, again, I have so many. You know, so many bands that I think could be. Beartooth is another one for sure. Dayseeker is another one for sure. Then there are so many bands from St. Louis that you know. Do I think they should be getting national radio play? One thousand percent. Yeah. So there's something that, and again, went vi- kind of viral. I love the band Third Eye Blind. I've always, I finally saw him live like two years ago. Bucket list band. Finally saw him live. The singer always struck me as, he struck me as the character that he played in the movie Rockstar. I don't know if you guys remember this. Let's pull up a clip. <laughs> for, for those of you who don't know, his name is Stephen Jenkins. And he played, he played the singer that replaced Mark Wahlberg in his tribute band after they kicked him out. And he was just this pretentious douchebag. He was like in the rival band. And he was just kind of a, just a douche. He's just like an unlikable guy. He was this guy. No, I don't even think I'm coming back. I don't. Yeah, well, that's because I'm not. Look, I'm serious. If I leave now, I'm not coming back. Did you just Shut say that? Up, that's him. Did you just say that? Last time. <clears throat> So anyway, he was the dude, he played the the rival rock guy in the movie Rockstar. And he always just kind of struck me as that that's probably pretty close to the kind of guy he is in real life. Recently, he was asked for an autograph in the airport. And this is what he did. Can I get a photo of you? Tell me a song. Tell me a song that's on. Out of the way. I can't believe you're literally going to quiz. Guy asked for a picture and an autograph. And he says, tell me a song that's on a record. Rather than just doing it, this fucking guy quizzes this dude. Hey, little, I've met some freaking bow hangers. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because there's a business of signing stuff that goes up on eBay. Sure. And I don't want to participate. In it. That's cool. So this guy thinks that his signature goes up on eBay and it's going to make this guy. This guy's going to retire because he got Stephen Jenkins signature. What a dick. Just give the guy a picture. Give the guy an autograph. You're going to quiz him and act. Like, try to see if he's a real fan, a hardcore. Name me an obscure song from, from an obscure record. God. I would never, like. I mean, I know. It's like, good lord. Like, the record. Faster. I mean, I have this shit. Man. I'll sign one record, okay? I'll okay. sign one thing. What's your name? Nick. My name's Go Fuck Yourself, Steve Jenkins. I don't want it anymore. You fuck. Wow. Can you believe that? Look, he was at the airport. He's probably got somewhere to be. He got stopped. I understand that that's annoying. I've never been a person that would stop anyone, anywhere, for anything. I have my heroes. I have my people that inspired me. I've talked about it on the show. I've had unfortunate meetings with people. That I did not want to happen. I was forced into them. You know, I saw Be Real and Send Dog at LAX. I so badly wanted to go up and just say, hey, big fan. Love you guys. I didn't do that. I'm not going to stop them at the airport. They got shit to do. They got places to be. So I, that part I get. But this dude, he's a fan. He comes up with one of your records. Sign the fucking thing and be on the way. Say, hey, thank you. Thank you for being a fan. 
if it gets weird, that's when you be a dick. It's not weird that this guy approaches you and wants to feel valued as a fan and wants to let you know that he appreciates you. Maybe that wasn't the vibe. Out of context, we saw 35 seconds. It could have been 10 minutes of this guy being a dick, and then finally this dude gave in. Who knows? But that's an unfortunate situation if it's just like you have a fan come up and you're like, yeah, uh, recite me verse two of this song from this record that no one ever listened to because it's a B-side. Like, ugh, get out of here. Get over yourself. That's upsetting. Still like the guy. Still like Third Eye Blind. Great band. He was in the movie Rockstar. So now I want to <laughs> – I talked about Rockstar. Now I just want to play my favorite scene from Rockstar. And for those of you that don't know, Rockstar was a movie with Mark Wahlberg, sort of like loosely based on the Judas Priest story, where a fan comes in and takes over for the lead singer of a very successful, very popular band. Mark Wahlberg plays that singer. Really cool movie. I, I think it's an underrated movie. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Mark Wahlberg fanboy, but this is when he auditions for the band. They see that he's in a tribute band of theirs, like a tribute for their band. They get a video from some groupies. They're like, hey, this is the guy we need now that we're kicking out our singer. He's perfect for it. This is his audition scene. Why am I explaining this movie to people? You should be seeing this. If you like music at all, you should know what this is. Sort of cringe, but who gives a fuck? It's skinny Mark Wahlberg. Blowing it, dude. Yep. Missed your cue, mate. Yeah, we're so like, metal. We got drinks you know in the, the afternoon. Song, yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. All right, well, we'll pick it up uh, just coming out of the intro. <laughs> I love it. Love everything about this. I want to be like if I was alive during the hair metal days. Yeah. Sorry. Mark Wahlberg's got a big head, huh? We're wasting our time here. Yeah? So, sorry, it would, it would, would it be okay if I was, um, could I start it one more time? All right, yeah, go again. Sorry about that. Taste my soul, taste my life, for my breath. Also, like as a singer, I've gone to auditions for bands, you know, very early on in my life. But like it was always a live setting, like we're going to jam and you come sing, you know, we'll play some some riffs we have and you just kind of freestyle over them. Or we'll play like here's a song that we recorded. It's, you know, it's recorded. Learn it. Come sing it. But like this band's like coming to our multi-million dollar recording studio. And we're going to. We're going to have you sing one of our biggest hits. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. God, she was good looking, huh? She's still good looking. But Jesus, look at young Jennifer Aniston. Lost in space. Zach Wilde. Jason Bonham is in here somewhere. There he is. All fat and stuff. This dude on the right is from Dokken. And the dude with the shitty curly hair is an actor. So they got three legitimate rock stars and then one actor to be this band. Steel Dragon. Apparently she has a penis. Never mind that. Yep, feeling it. Heart squeals. Yeah. Unnecessary high. Oh, he ripped it. 
What do you think, guys? Is that good enough? So is he going to take over for a multi-platinum selling band and go on the road and be the guy? Yeah, two minutes was enough. We're good. Well, mate, um, do you want the gig then? Yeah. And that's apparently how it happened with Judas Priest. Very cool movie. Cool story. Anyway, if you like rock and roll, you like music, you should like that movie. Well, look, at the end of the day, sign autographs, fuckers. I don't know.